information battlefield uh, not less important than kinetic one maybe more important wow. because uh, uh, at first uh, no information is more powerful gun than kinetic one because people who take gun in hand at first they must decide in head uh, to get this gun in hand yeah you understand yeah. so first information then kinetic uh, and uh, no, for now, my motivation is I saw the like honor of Ukrainian society and uh, how it's powerful. Uh, and uh, I want to stop the war. One. Look at that, episode 384 of A to the Show. Um, right now, we're in um, Eastern Ukraine with um, award-winning war photographer, Andrei Dubchak, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Um, how's your day been so far? Uh, for now, I'm in Kyiv, yeah, and uh, try to solve situation uh, near the Kyiv and inside Kyiv. Uh, I came to Kyiv from Lviv because I have like few days not rest, but uh, I go to border, get some volunteer help. Uh, and bring to the guys here in Kiev. It's like medic, and it was uh, medical uh, equipment and uh, medical supply for uh, people who work at the front line. So it's uh, possible for journalists to bring things which can save life. It's not gun, it's just uh, equipment and ammunition which can save life for military and for civil people too. Um, great, thank you. You know, for doing that. Um, I, you know, I have heard you say that um, there is many war crimes happening in uh, Ukraine, and um, you know, you're a journalist. Um, you know, I've heard of journalists who've gotten hurt um, in Ukraine in the situation. Um, so, what are you doing to stay safe in, the, in these times? To stay safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, of course, I have a, a, a very big experience. Yeah, I started from a first streamer of Euromaidan revolution and film mm -hmm. like all uh, re revolution of dignity like days and the shooting one to like bloody one uh, 18, 19 and 20 of February. Then I was uh, in, Crime in Crimea during the annexation. And then I started to film war and uh, honestly, for these eight years, probably one year of my life, I spent uh, at the front line. I pass a lot of uh, war correspondence trainings. I pass a few paramedic trainings, and I have a lot of experience. Um, but for now, the situation is very hard. So the war is not the same as it was like a few months ago, when you have stable line uh, and... Uh, like Ukrainian and Russian, and they just shoot each other from long distance. For now, a lot of movement, a lot of unpredictable situation. Uh, so during uh, my trips to the front line, I'm trying to clarify all information about roads. I all times ask people, uh, ask at the checkpoints, what's the situation, quiet, not quiet, dangerous, not dangerous. And of course, trying to... Uh, select the most safe way to get to the destination and to show the situation. I have bulletproofs, uh, I have uh, medical like equipment uh, and uh, a tourniquet like you no know, uh, combat application tourniquets. Uh, I have additional fuel, I have additional water and I have additional food so uh, I try to do the best for safety, yeah, and the best to, to show the picture, but safety first, of course. Um, yeah, definitely, great. that's very, very important. And so you said you've been on the front line as well. Uh, so you've definitely experienced firsthand, like, the attacks that have occurred. How do you navigate around those, those uh, certain situations? Like, how are you able to just operate and, like, you know, do uh, do your job when you're in those positions. 
No, I'm trying to focus on the, my job. And honestly, uh, when you are a photographer or cameraman, for you, situation like uh, not so hard. Because if people, no, you do the work. Yeah? You have to focus and to locus. Yeah? And you not concentrate just on, on the dangerous, you concentrate also on the work. And it, it helps to minimize uh, the fare, yeah, you know. But of course, sometimes you have like strong fare, and uh, if you feel it, you need to stop filming and think, uh, oh, it's okay or no. <laughs> I see. Yeah. yeah. And um, this sounds, um, you know, like a different situation than what happened with your Maidan, right? Um, you're involved a lot, you know, with the Eastern side, with the Donbass frontier. And, um, this is very different. Are you still going to um, Eastern Ukraine? Um, can you still go to Eastern Ukraine? What's the situation there? Uh, no, I say no. Eastern Ukraine is a uh, very heavy fight, yeah, very very hard fight. But uh, even at the Donbas, Ukrainian front line still exists. And uh, honestly, uh, I have contact there, and the guys uh, write me they do a lot of success against Russian. But we talk about the troops which are uh, very experienced and uh, which have a lot of uh, practice of war, yeah, so they're really very effective. And especially with new gun, with uh, Adlao and Javelins, they very, very successful. But if you talk about territorial defense near the Kiev, they very high motivated. They want to protect own home, but at the same time, they don't have a lot of experience and a lot of these guys just have first first fight and you no know, you can you can rely to the people who never was under mortar or in trenches under like machine gun shelling so their behavior is unpredictable in situation uh, and uh, no you understand it's hard hard to operate with people who never was under direct fire but at the same time, Ukrainian mentality, even like civil society, is prepared for war because uh, for years of years and years, for eight years, people uh, all time had information about conflict, and the mental uh, part of the Ukrainian society is really very ready for this. We have like millions of volunteers, we have millions of fighters. <laughs> A lot of people complain they uh, don't don't have possibility to get gun. Like uh, I think it's enough, but for now, like government stopped to give it to the territorial defense guy because for now a lot of people like ready for fight. Yeah, and, and uh, I want to get to the recent information that we've been listen- hearing about is the the current peace negotiations that are going on and how also Russia is. Talking, uh, talking about stop like reducing military operations near Kiev, and like I don't know if you can tell us more about that. Yeah, I don't believe in it, and uh, as I know from intelligence service, uh, not only Ukrainian, it's official statement of uh, United Kingdom uh, intelligence service and United States intelligence service. They use this negotiation just to uh, rebuild all the troops to. Uh, make established logistic and to get more uh, ammunition and supply to the army troops near Kyiv. And uh, from uh, United Kingdom Intelligence Service, it's official statement that Russia uh, prepare, ha, no, may, 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 may make preparation for attack to Kyiv, like to, to have a fight near Kyiv. Uh, so, no, it's obvious from year to year we had conversation with Russia and uh, no no one was successful. And you know the Bismarck word, the agreement uh, which signed with Russia don't cost even cost of paper. <laughs> like, at which uh, this statement was signed. Uh, Russia used uh, hybrid war and uh, of course they uh, for years prepared for this fight, and uh, for now, Russia is ready for isolation. They build all internet, they build all payment system, and uh, I think uh, Putin and team had the plan and have the plan. 
Of course, for now, like the fights is not so successful as Russia want, but at the same time, they have very powerful army, and uh, we'll see, we'll see. And what is good, the intelligence report on the the morale of the Russian troops? Because there's also oh, there's reports about how the there's demoralization in the Russian ranks. I think demoralization is exist, but at the same time, you know the Russian strategy. Like uh, they can use people as a meat, like <laughs> mortar meat. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it's Russia's strategy for all time in all country. Like in Chechnya, in Afghanistan, during the World War Two, yeah. Yes. A lot of sounds like in the distance. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> yesterday I read some information. I can confirm it, but support of Putin for now like eighty-four uh, percent in Russia. Oh wow! So uh, so. They can get another new meat for Ukrainian front line. And uh, a lot of uh, people of Russian soldiers die, but at the same time, it was like no uh, intelligence, uh, intelligence, small troops which go ahead and probably will die. But the uh, main forces will know the position of the Ukrainian like army, Ukrainian forces, and uh, can fight them. It's it's usual tactics for big, big, big troops. But at the same time, uh, Ukrainian forces is successful and very motivated. And uh, like hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian fighters pass the front line during these eight years of war. And uh, you know, it's really brave and ready people who want to defend their own land and who want to stay. Like a lot of them say till the end, you know, like, so... No, my main goal is uh, do news, not to be in news. Because news you know the story ab mm -hmm. about Fox Fox News team. Uh, I also helped Fox News team to find the injured one man who lost his leg. And uh, I know the Ukrainian girl and the man from Fox team. We live together. Uh, very smiley, very nice man. But they became a news, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate thing to happen, especially especially when you're just doing your job. Yeah, but situation is unpredictable. Uh, a lot of uh, heavy artillery sharing, so it could be quiet and in one second, you know, like huge artillery shelling or grads or uh, cassette uh, missile or airstrike. So it's unpredictable. A lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, no, some journalists, Max Levin disappear. I, I know him very, very, very well. Uh, some other journalists get cut conclusion. Yeah, conclusion, like when hit the, by wave from explosion. Uh, and uh, some get like uh, injured from parts of shell. So it's unpredictable sometimes. Uh, you need to manage your risk, but in this situation, not all time is possible because you can drive through the peaceful street and uh, suddenly like an airstrike, you know, it's unpredictable. And what kind of advice would you give to these journalists when they're, you know, on their duty in the field and especially in, in war circumstances? Uh, no, a lot of rules, honestly. Uh, all time think, all time have a plan how to escape. Yeah, because you can go to one direction and uh, it can be possible go back. Uh, all time, uh, see and try to think about the map location. No, the map, yeah, like which road will be more safe. Uh, uh, do not use uh, the road which is not uh, highway. Yeah, better to use highway. Because uh, when you go through the forest, it could be like trap and so on, mine trap and so on, so on, so on. It's unpredictable. Try to use just big highway. When you go to the long direction, uh, long distance direction, uh, all time try to use bulletproof. If it like think like no, if you think it could be some dangerous, uh, dress bulletproof. Yeah, it's good especially in the car. 
all time have all necessary in with you in your car yeah like computer additional water additional food additional fuel additional protection uh, additional light additional battery uh, you need to have inverter in car yeah in case of uh, no electricity you can charge uh, your camera your mobile phone uh, have additional mobile phone with extended uh, battery uh, you need to have uh, glasses yeah all time in car on you because it's unpredictable situation and if in the next moment you understand you are under mortar shelling like huge one you need to put glasses to the eye because uh, explosion wave can broke the uh, car glass and you will be without eye yeah? so you need to have bulletproof uh, glasses on you uh you need to have all time with you like uh, combat application tourniquet uh, uh, in car also combat application tourniquet uh, you need better to have su car yeah four and four to drive through the unpredictable roads uh, uh, you need to be not very careful when you drive through the bad roads because uh, fast, uh, faster is safer, safe, safety. Yeah. Well, safety oh, wow. is uh, speed, yeah. Uh, I have, I know rumors like if you speed up more than eighty kilometers per hour, and you uh, go through the uh, uh, small mine, the mine will explode, like uh, behind the car. Behind yeah. you, okay. if you, if you have yeah. high speed up, but no. Again, it's rumor, and I <laughs> don't don't want to test it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, of course, not travel alone. Yeah, it's prohibited. You need to have additional people in your car, and uh, if it possible, you need to share location with uh, some people who like in safe zone, you know, so they will know your position. And if something happens, at least they can know the position of the body. Yeah? Or, oh. yeah, or, uh, no, yeah, it's, why not? No, you need to think about all risk, about all dangerous possibility. Uh, you need to have base, or better fuel base, with water, with food, uh, because if Kiev will be circled, and uh, Russia start to bomb, like, uh, city environment, will be no water, will be no mobile network, will be no, uh, nothing, yeah, like, uh, better to have bio toilet with you in your shelter because it's also a big problem. Better to have like a, a dry shower, yeah. It's uh, no because it's summer and when you smell like a skunk, yeah, it's <laughs> not, 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 not the best, the best for <laughs> your environment and for you too. You need to have uh, uh, sleeping uh, bags, yeah, and carry mats. Uh, you need to have a uh, uh, tourist gas uh, fire, you know, like it's yes, no, right. small gas, so, yeah. And you can do coffee at least, yeah. <laughs> Without coffee, it's not right. <laughs> right. Uh, no, all, 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 all this I have, really. I, I have all this. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, you need to think all time. It should be safe, not safe. Uh, you need to, you must understand the people around you who say you for now it's safe uh, they don't know <laughs> no one knows. No people one knows. die people die in reason they don't know like at the front line very experienced guy die uh, at the checkpoint people die because they don't know like they are not ready and of course uh, when you go to the front line and operate in hard situation <laughs> you need to be alone you need to be with experienced group and uh, if you have rest uh, you need to, to just find safety place like it must be like some shelter or some defended place by a car or it must be inside the building and uh, if you walk and if all around you stop you need to low down your profit like just stand or, or your knee or sit down yeah not stand right. in full post right yeah and 
uh, all time you need to uh, see around you when you walk and find you no know, your eyes might need to find place to to save yeah it uh, should be like some gap in land because if mortar started yeah the best way to the safe you no know, you have to second to 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 hide yeah Okay. It yeah. sounds like uh, you have a lot of experience doing this, and you've been doing this for many yeah, years. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I spent I spent one year of my life in the front line. I was under mortar a few times. Uh, with Lindsay Dario, two two times I was under direct mortar shelling. Uh, I was under sniper fire. I was under machine gun fire. Uh, no, a yeah. lot of time. Yeah, so. And um, after after all the situation, you you thought about it, you think about it, and uh, do some analysis about situation and uh, what did you wrong, what did you good, yeah, like um, this experience. And of course, you must not think about uh, like bodies and so on, so on, so on. Try to. Yeah. Try to get it out from your head because you get the PTSD. Uh, and also, one um, uh, if you, uh, it's like uh, very good rules. If you feel bad, if you want to cry, uh, not stop you, cry. Yeah, cry with people, cry with all others because it's like. Uh, uh, you lose the tension. Yeah, yeah. You, you, your, your emotion escape you. Yeah, with crying, with. Your emotion with love, with uh, because if you get it inside, you will get PTSD 100%. I saw a lot of cases when people trying to be strong, yeah, and at the end, they like just get some very serious, like nervous problem. Oh, no, yeah. Um, I want to know. So, you've been doing this for you know many years now, um, but obviously, this is you know much more than it's been before. Um, you know, what is your motivation now um, to keep, to stay in Ukraine, to take all these photos? Obviously, you know, thank you for doing it. You're sharing news, which is very important. But what is, you know, your personal motivation? My personal motivation, uh, it's changed for the last time, yeah. Uh, but for now, I understand the information bottle field uh, not less important than kinetic one, maybe more important. Wow. Because uh, uh, at first, uh, no, information is more powerful gun than kinetic one. Because people who take gun in hand, at first they must decide in head uh, to get this gun in hand. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. So first information, then kinetic. Uh, and uh, no, for now, my motivation is I saw the, like, honor of Ukrainian society and uh, how it's powerful uh, and uh, I want to stop the war it's a stupid question yeah but not not me I, I... Mm -hmm. yes uh, if you're getting a call that's fine I understand yeah not, not me only uh, the, the international community and Ukrainian community of journalists uh, can stop the war I think like can can reduce the Motivation of Russian to go deep inside Ukraine. Right. Uh, so uh, it's not only about me; it's about community because I help a lot of international journalists uh, and uh, big TV channel, and uh, I know how it's work. Uh, I do it very well, uh, so I need to do it myself. Of course, like I have like personal motivation, like. A lot of likes, a lot of uh, like uh, some people recognize me, but again, uh, for many years I didn't do it because uh, no, some people recognize. Okay, hi, hi, no, that's all. I'm not like very, how you say, ambitious. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for now, I understand uh, if I will like advertise myself, if, if I will advertise my project, for me, it will be uh, easier to, to do things in the best way. I get can get some additional equipment easier. I can get like uh, access easier. So why not? Yeah. And you you've told us that you've been doing this for for so long, and obviously for one year on the front line with like 
under sniper fire, machine gun, even artillery. What kind of toll has this taken on you? And like, hasn't this like affected you in a way where you just like, I don't want to do this anymore? Uh, the first time when I was under sniper fire, it was sniper and machine gun at one time. It confirmed by Ukrainian uh, soldiers at the top front line. Uh, I had like uh, handshakes and uh, I asked myself, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, you, are, you, are you idiot? Yeah? You don't have even insurance. Yeah? Uh, but you know, like in a few days, I start to do the same and do a very nice report. Uh, unfortunately, it was in 2017, yeah, 17. No, 18, 18. Uh, unfortunately, the few guys from this report uh, die at last days. And the uh, commander of 503 battalion of Marines also uh, killed by Russian. Um, no, I don't know. No, I just think uh, you just came to the front line for a few minutes or a few hours or for a few days, but the guys in the front line... Uh, all times uh, they fight for for you for my family you know and so i don't have clear answer to this question right. but uh, no my motivation is uh, i do it professionally very professionally mm -hmm. and uh, it's it it have a very big uh, uh, impact yeah mm -hmm. uh, and it protects my country so it helped the Ukrainian because the video from Yerpin when the civil family was die, uh, you saw this video. Yes. Uh, it spread all around the world, like CNN, BBC, NBC, New York Times, and uh, Zelensky uh, made video, big film about Ukraine, which also includes this this my small video, and Biden showed it to the Congress when uh, Congress decided to get. Uh, to bring gun to Ukraine, so it's impact. It's impact and it's profit for Ukraine. Yes. And of course, it shows the Russian uh, war crime to the whole world, to the society of the world, and uh, people around the world like change maybe the decision they mood about Ukraine-Russian war, and so it it will help to Ukraine. Uh, right, I will say the information that came out of Ukraine is something that's really, you know, the whole world's talking about what's happening in um, Ukraine and, you know, our support to you. Um, I'm curious, you know, to know about who's still in uh, Kyiv and in Ukraine. Are there still civilians there? Have they all, um, you know, left or what's the morale? Mm. No, well, for now, like main part of uh, women and uh, children and grand uh, uh, go to the west of Ukraine or go to Europe. In Kiev, still a lot of civil population, women, men, children, families. Like, uh, but of course, I think uh, I don't have like percentage of the escape, how, how much how much people escape the Kiev. But uh, no, I think maybe. Uh, Seventy percent of people escaped Kiev, and uh, a lot of men in Kiev, and uh, uh, a lot of men uh, who work abroad uh, go to Ukraine to support uh, and fight. Yeah, and um, honestly, a lot of volunteers in Kiev, people who just uh, help to build barricades. Uh, who drive, like, uh, bring uh, water, uh, oh, wow. move civilian family from Kiev to other districts uh, and regions mm -hmm. of Ukraine, and uh, vice versa, they bring uh, help from the western part of Ukraine to Kiev and to other city. Uh, for example, yesterday, I know Russian crime. Um, my uncle, he is, like, volunteer in the United States, and they... Uh, buy some uh, help for Chernigov, yeah. It was mm -hmm. like pampers, uh, food, uh, water, medicine, med medical supply, and so on, so on. And six cars of this uh, volunteer drive to Chernigov, and Russia killed them by mortar. 
Okay. And from uh, six cars survived just two people. It wow. was yesterday. So one more, one more, one more war crime. One more war crime. Yeah. yeah. It's so unfortunate that that's all happening because there's war. You know, war has been happening for you know some time. You know, especially on Eastern Ukraine, but. Uh, for, now it, for now it's not some time for now it's all time and people who escape uh, Bordyanka, who escape Irpin who escape other cities mm. uh, they just uh, said the crazy story about full street of bodies and uh, today I hear the story like man escape the village and he uh, he drive through the uh, no, through the body, yeah, because all street was full of the body, and uh, oh. uh, he made made, made decision go through, directly through the bodies because or 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 he will escape his family, his children, or he will stuck and uh, could oh. be they they can die, yeah. So he decided to drive through the body, and mother like close the eye for children, and he like drive also like this one, uh, no, over the body. I mean like. Bye bye car. Oh wow. And so the the streets still have, you know, bodies there from the war that's been happening. Yeah, yeah it's bloody war and of course uh, Russian soldiers are scared and uh, uh, then we will do a crazy things to to survive because uh, very often uh, uh, like all all wars have own phonetic, but uh, no one will have own logic, and uh, it's all time crazy. And for now, it's very bloody because. So, also, I, I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, so, you you also do a lot of stories from the front line where you just go up to people that that are operating on the front line and then ask them about their about their lives or like. Uh, give let them talk about their personal stories what for you is like a, the best like the most interesting story you've heard from the front line uh, no at first i need to say is uh, war it's not gun it's not bullet no it's also a gun and bullet yeah but firstly the war is people yeah people who take gun in hand and civil people who who behind them or in, in middle of, of the of them, you know. So people, no war. It's people. It's it's not gun again. Uh, well, for last time, of course, it's uh, maybe the story of this die family. Uh, first, uh, they died at my eye. At my, I saw it. Yeah, when we came to the, it was woman forty three, uh, boy nineteen, and girl nine. Uh, with them was man 28, but from other family. And when we came after explosion of this uh, mortar shell, uh, I saw the, like, at my eye, the skin of the boy became yellow, like, you know. And I saw the small blood from his uh, mouth, like, you know, and it, of course, got me, like, I get this picture for probably all my life here. Yeah. Uh, and the story of this uh, family is next. The husband, uh, the day before war started, uh, no, they, all this family was a refugee, like IDP from Donetsk. They escaped in 2014 when war just started. Mm -hmm. They was very successful here in Kiev, have business, uh, rich, buy flat, so on, so on, so on. Uh, and the mother of the husband is living still in Donetsk and uh, she got COVID uh, and uh, it was very serious situation with uh, his mother and the day before uh, war started he passed the border between Ukraine and uh, Donetsk Republic people and then started the war and he tried to escape back to the Irpin to family but can't because uh, uh the it was prohibited uh, for men from 18 till 60 to escape the Donetsk Republic people uh, 
Oh. Uh, and uh, he saw a Twitter of the day the family, the, his wife and children die. He saw a Twitter post uh, family die at the Alpine Bridge. Uh, and then he saw video, not my video, another video, uh, and recognize on children by clothes, you know. And he go to the border with Russia and uh, say, I lost my family, I need to go to Ukraine. Uh, they not allow him to escape, but he said, okay, you can shoot me, but I go ahead. He go to Moscow, from Moscow to Minsk, from Minsk to Poland, from Poland to Ukraine, and here he find bodies of uh, children and wife. Uh, and the story of the, that moment I know for now, uh, they, the family stand uh, till the end in bomb shelter because wife was very scary of all this situation. And in the day when they die, they try to escape with uh, grandma and uh, grandpa. And grandpa had a problem with his leg and uh, they was very slow. <laughs> when then started mortar shelling, so it was like not one explosion, it was like seven more closer, closer, closer. Uh, uh, they just uh, escaped the grandma and grandpa and tried to rush to to go out from this dangerous area but unfortunately the mortar shelling will kill them yeah. no it's maybe the most like tragic story for the last period that I saw I saw a lot of people, of crying people I heard a lot of story but again, when you hear, it's one, but when you see, it's another. Yes. Yeah, I um, believe that. Um, Said, we are uh, we are running a little bit out of time here. I don't know if there's a last question you want to ask before. Uh, yeah, I yeah. actually do. Um, I know the this whole episode has been a bit. Uh, we've been talking about very tragic events and like you know uh, you know the the bad experiences you've seen. So now I kind of want to change the mood a bit and i want to ask you uh under like what do you what do you do to like kind of put yourself in a good mood like what's your day what's your routine or like the things that you like to do when in your spare time that make you have a little fun or <laughs> just enjoy oh, your feels, time it feels you need to joke yeah uh, mm -hmm. yeah when you when you meet as the frontline people who like have fair scary joke like you <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, you 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 understand this time it's real fighters who just escaped the very dangerous area the joke could be very stupid like do you remember how like uh, oleg lost her leg ha <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the, no at the same time uh, you need to realize the humor is trying to no, help people to not traumatize very much here yeah? so at first humor in uh, in many situations, you can use humor to relax people around you. And of course, these people will relax you. Because if you are inside scared uh, people, like uh, you feel also scared, and you can control the situation. Now, second, uh, uh, good rest, good food, if you have possibility. Uh, talking with women, of course. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, alcohol is not the best idea, but uh, I accept it. Uh, if you like red wine, the evening get like yeah. one, two glasses of red wine can relax you and you sleep good. Uh, you can use some drugs, no, not heavy, like... Uh, <laughs> sorry, 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 I, 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 sorry. I'm not about narcotics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, th I mean, it's like uh, no, med med medical drugs to sleep yes. good, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Xanax, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. No, so like, it's, like, uh, it's like you're the, the dating scene still working for you in the, <laughs> in the Ukraine. Uh, no, you, you need to communicate with people, and also, yeah. as one very important thing, I can advise to all people not watch TV at all because it's like, uh I spent two days in Vinica region and all, all my family and relatives uh, watch TV 
and uh, they just all time like it's tension you know like they watch it and scared and more 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 and i also like become more scared even i operate as a front line so tv it's not the best idea mm-hmm. read the news listen podcast uh see something short in instagram but uh, not spend all time to watch the world yeah? try to watch movie about loud about like animal cartoons something good <laughs> watch, watch comedians maybe or something like that as well yes 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 why not why not all just to relax because if you will be uh, very strict and intention you know like and uh, nervous uh, what you can do it must yeah. so you need to be relaxed and try to rest have good mood a lot of joke and uh, you will be effective uh, in difficult situation if you like have enough resources for it like internal resources I mean. and finally i wanted to ask like what is the your prediction for the possible outcome of this war uh, no it's uh uh I predict the escalation, but uh, I'm not ha- happy from this. Like, uh, I don't know. For now, situation very difficult, and uh, Putin and Russian is uh, like a rat in the corner. You know, they don't have way back. Yeah, they need to go ahead just to Ukraine, and they will use all possibility to get Ukraine and to fight Ukraine. <laughs> but at the same time. Ukrainian army really strong, and if international society and uh, another country help us with gun, we can stay for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, for now, strategy of Russia from Blitzkrieg moved to the long fight. They broke Ukrainian like oil supply bases, no fuel supply bases. I mean, so after it, I recognize that Ukraine uh, and Russia, it will be a long war and uh, this unpredictable result. I think Ukraine win, but uh, the main question is cost of it, the yeah, cost and time. Yeah. Uh, so Ukraine win, but when and how much it will cost, I don't know. Really don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's a great answer. We And we support that. We definitely, we definitely agree that Ukraine yes. and, uh, eventually win. Thank you. Thank you. Support. Um, thank you, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Andre. Really, this is you know the war on information, and um, you sharing all this information really is uh, key um, for all you know the world to know about. So, um, thank you. Keep you know keep on keeping on. We'll be following your journey and uh, keep uh, spreading the news. <laughs> the truth, specifically spreading the, the truth. truth. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And have a great rest of your day. All right. Signing out. All right. Goodbye.